Welcome back everyone. This is part three for this news report for today for Monday, July 29th, 2013. I'm Darko. My channels are DDarko2012 and if you could subscribe to DDarko2013 because uh, eventually I'm just going to stop posting to the 2012 account so they don't pull my channel. But um, all right, I'm going to cover a little bit of Trayvon case. Um, there's an article, a story. I, I just didn't even go that viral. I was kind of shocked by it, but uh, here we go. Trayvon's mom, he was just a kid trying to get home. So Trayvon Martin's parents made appearances on three of the major networks today telling each interviewer that they were shocked by the verdict. We felt in our hearts that we were going to get a conviction. And you remember the famous quote by the prosecutor who's representing the family, which said, remember what she said? She goes, I was, I'm a social engineer. That's what she said. Black Panther's $10,000 bounty to capture George Zimmerman dead or alive was from 2012. So reports emerging this week that the Black Panthers had offered $10,000 uh, dead for dead, dead or alive capture of George Zimmerman was in fact from March 2012 before George Zimmerman was arrested for the Trayvon Martin killing. Numerous outlets reported the news of the bounty as if it was just announced as a response to the Zimmerman not guilty verdict. However, the story was based on a video from 2012 and is not new. So the reality is that the, you know, I don't know. I don't even want to say it because I'll get commenters and subscribers that will just go in there and leave a hundred freaking comments. So I'm not even going to touch that crap. George Zimmerman emerged from hiding for a truck crash rescue. So the murdering Zimmerman who shot somebody in cold blood has been hiding since he was acquitted of murder and the death of Trayvon Martin emerged to help rescue a family who was uh, basically trapped in an overturned vehicle police said uh, today so this was actually July 22nd it was one of the two men who came to the aid of Dana and Mark Gersel and their two children who were trapped inside a blue Ford Explorer SUV that had rolled over after traveling off the highway in Sanford Florida at, at approximately 5 45 p.m. Thursday the crash occurred in the intersection of I-4 and Route 46. The crash site is less than a mile from where Zimmerman shot Martin. By the time police arrived, two people, including Zimmerman, had already helped the family get out of the overturned car. The sheriff's office said no one was reported to be injured. It was the first known sighting of Zimmerman since he left the courtroom. And while beating and robbing a white man, three black men say this is for Trayvon. So here we go again. Yet another innocent person was violently victimized in the name of Trayvon Martin. So... If I guess the author says they'll be waiting for Eric Holder to speak out against this obvious hate crime. So from WAPO, it says here a Bethesda man was beaten and robbed early sa uh, Saturday morning in Adams Morgan by three men who yelled, this is for Trayvon Martin, before attacking him, police said. So it says here the men approached the adult white male from behind while he was walking into this uh, Euclid Street northwest at 1.26 a.m. So two of the men threw the victim to the ground and kicked him. Uh, it says here, the three perpetrators then took the victim's iPhone and wallet and fled. It says, fortunately, the victim was not seriously injured in the attack. And this is from McClatchy, so uh, they usually put out some pretty good, uh, some pretty good pro-establishment propaganda. Stand your ground helped Zimmerman get away with murder, Trayvon's mom says. So the mother of Trayvon Martin said Monday that she believed Florida's stand your ground law played a role in her son's shooting death, but she wasn't ready to support a boycott of the state for not charging or changing the self-defense law. I think we have to change these laws so people don't get away with murder, she said, adding that her son was unarmed and peacefully walking back to his dad's place when he was initially pursued by George Zimmerman. It's like I said before, whether um, whether Zimmerman was guilty or not, his life is over, uh, pretty much. I mean, he can't really go out, and when he did, he's saving people. So I mean, but he's got to wear a bulletproof vest. He's got to be able to. He's got to be able to try to carry his firearm if they even let him uh, do that again. Uh, but this is. But but it's not just that. It's lose lose. So. Even in the hearts and minds of people, gun owners, when they're ready to defend themselves, they have to, especially from someone that's not their race, they have to be very, very, um, uh, you know, hesitant before they're actually able to defend themselves. They have to think about, well, do I want to spend a year or two in jail and I'll lose my life and my savings and everything and my job, whatever, and my reputation and go in hiding uh, just so I can defend myself. So, every, uh, you know, this is what it's going to be uh, about, basically. So, yeah. You know, the whole standing your ground, this was about not standing your ground. That's, that's why I think it was a big psyop. Nursing home resident dead after a confrontation with police. 95-year-old resident of an Illinois nursing home died early Saturday 
It says, hours after being shocked with a taser and beanbag rounds in a confrontation with police, authorities said that the resident of Victoria's uh, Center of Park Forest uh, it says here, it's threatening paramedics and staff with a cane and a metal shoehorn when police arrived at the complex. Police said they struck him with a taser and a beanbag round after he threatened officers with a 12-inch butcher knife. I've covered articles like this before um, where people don't want the... Uh, uh, people, uh, basically these older people, they don't want to be helped or they don't want people coming in their homes or in this case in their rooms. And then uh, and the police actually who are supposed to be supposedly helping them uh, uh, don't. I think the one case I'm, I'm referring to, the example was uh, someone had some kind of medical device and it ticked off by accident and they came in there and he didn't want them in there. So they basically tased them and beat them up. Uh, militarized SWAT forcefully evict elderly women from foreclosed home. Failed to pay your mortgage due to the collapsed economy, SWAT members may show up wearing full military gear in order to forcefully evict you from your home at the direction of international banking cartels. There's been numerous instances of this, but one that really was ignored for the most part happened back in November of last year as reported on by AOL Real Estate. It got almost no views because apparently militarized SWAT troopers were moving uh, old people uh, from their homes because they couldn't keep up with paying the mega banks that are bloated with $83 billion per year in taxpayer funding is now the role of debt force SWAT team. And instead of sending in some local officers to escort the 63-year-old woman from her home in Idaho Springs, Colorado, the SWAT team was apparently afraid of some of the elderly woman supporters who came to protect her home. It says as it turns out, one of the protesters apparently had a concealed carry at the scene, which sent the SWAT into a furious outrage that led with the troopers pointing assault rifles at 12 protesters who were outside the home. Yeah, actually, I remember this video. Because law-abiding citizens with concealed carry licenses are, are, real, are the real threat, despite the fact that we know citizens are preventing over 900,000 crimes that could have turned bloody thanks to handguns in the hands of law-abiding citizens. So, But it says here that surely the SWAT team with full military gear, assault rifles, and bulletproof armor was deathly afraid of the protester who had a concealed carry. It was like a firing squad. Deputies shoot Florida man in his own front yard. This is on today's... Uh, it says here, state law enforcement officials in Florida are investigating the shooting of a six-year-old man inside his front yard by deputies with the sheriff's office in Escambia County. It was like a firing squad, the victim Roy Middleton told the Pensacola News Journal on Saturday. Bullets were flying everywhere. Reported that Middleton was shot in the leg while his mother's car was hit by, by at least five bullets. Two deputies shot him early Saturday morning when he turned to face him while getting a cigarette out of his mother's car, saying he was bent over inside the car when he was ordered to get your hands out where the shooter could see them. So it says here that the news journal reported that a neighbor called uh, authorities or so after seeing someone reaching into the car, prompting the unidentified deputies to respond to what they thought was a burglary in the progress. Two deputies have been put on paid leave. I thought it was firecrackers. My girlfriend didn't, a neighbor told. And then we jumped up to take a look out the window and saw deputies carrying shotguns and stuff. They didn't check the license plate on the car or provide an explanation for their actions, but was glad that they did not uh, hit him in the head and in the chest. My, the, color, my, says here, my mother's car is full of bullet holes, though. My wife had to go and get a rental. Outrage at Toronto Police on teen death. So the Toronto Police Service is facing growing outrage after Canadian officers killed an 18-year-old man while he was apparently alone on a streetcar and holding a small knife. So there's intense criticism coming after the video was posted online showing the officers shooting Sammy Yatim in altercation on July 27th. It looks as though this young man was shot when he was alone in the streetcar surrounded by police officers. There was nothing else that could be done to save his life. Witnesses say the incident began when he pulled out a knife while hiding on the streetcar after noticing the driver stopped the vehicle and everyone except him. Uh, yeah, this Yatim walked off the streetcar. The police arrived on the scene and the video footage shows the officers surrounding the door of the streetcar. They fi fired nine gunshots towards him. One of the officers is afterwards walking up the steps of the vehicle and the sound of a taser is heard so they tase the dead guy. In 2012, Toronto police was harshly criticized after officers shot dead a mentally ill man who was wearing a hospital gown and holding two pairs of scissors in the middle of the street. So you don't bring a knife or scissors to a gunfight, I guess. Lawsuit says that SWAT officers dragged a 10-year-old from bathtub, uh, made him stand naked next to a 4-year-old sister, and terrorized the family. 
14 revenue collectors with helmets and face masks and assault rifles stormed in, says the family. Pittsburgh SWAT officers must face claims that they raided a family's home and violently dragged a child from the bathtub and terrorized it at gunpoint. It happened on December 7, 2010. When the family suddenly heard a loud explosion and saw bright lights as if grenades were going off, the complaint states. Uh, the Pittsburgh police SWAT officers wearing helmets and face masks then broke in and stormed through the front and back doors of the home. They never identified themselves and they pointed the assault rifles at the family shouting obscenities and destroyed their property. Officers have continued to harass and threaten the family since the raid, telling them that this is how, uh, this is how we do things here and that they should move out of Pittsburgh. Yeah, that place is a real hellhole, man. And be careful, man. I just out today. I saw the DNR with the little boat uh, going around, and I saw um, CPS bringing some kid back to his home. So they're out there, revenue collectors. It's the la it's the last days of the month, and although they claim they don't have quotas, these douchebags do have quotas to fulfill, and they even have pizza parties sometimes to celebrate how many tickets and money and uh, basically money that they steal uh, from hardworking American people to basically get these uh, nice little gadgets. Uh, like uh, assault rifles and, 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 and bulletproof vests and chest plates and batmobiles and sporty little uh, baseball caps. Delta offers to put down cardboard while forcing disabled man to crawl on the tarmac. Disabled Hawaii man is suing Delta after he says that the company forced him to crawl across the airport tarmac three times and only offered him cardboard so they would not get his suit dirty. He followed a lawsuit last week. It says here that he was forced to crawl across the airport tarmac up and down the stairs of an airplane, down the aisle of the aircraft, and out onto his seat. It says here, uh, here we are in the modern day, and people who are able-bodied were standing around with their arms crossed, watching me crawl under the guise that they could not touch me, lest they be liable. This is unbelievable. The company promised to be prepared before his next flight. That's what they offered him, and offered him a $100 voucher for his tribals, uh, basically, if he just let it go. If, uh, he didn't even go public with it. But then he arrived for his flight two days later, and he was once again forced to crawl up a flight of stairs that Delta employees refused to assist other than offering him a piece of cardboard put down so his clothes wouldn't get dirty. Let's not forget, uh, we have airline passengers, and the uh, basically the flight attendants are being sprayed for bugs. So build up to the next store I'm getting to. Pesticides are routinely sprayed in aircraft cabins by U.S. airlines, sometimes over the heads of passengers during flight. They call it uh, din disinsection? I don't know what the heck. Basically, they're spraying chemicals on passengers, and the flight attendants were originally the ones, I remember seeing the article, that was the original article, where the flight attendants were complaining because they're on there all the time. They say it was, they were making, it was making them sick. Then you have this, teen corn deticellars accidentally sprayed with fungicide, a farm chemical accident in Champaign County sent 70 teens to the hospital. According to uh, these firefighters, workers were uh, detasseling corn in a field when a Monsanto crop dusting plane accidentally sprayed them with chemicals. A hazardous materials crew was called to the scene to decontaminate, and the teens were rushed to Carl Hospital in Urbana. I guess that, yeah, Champaign. Move faster and finish up with the economy. Uh, Lou. Uh, the Treasury Department says no federal bailout, bailout for Detroit, so the Obama regime continues to make it clear don't expect a federal bailout for Detroit. But new, new $440 million hockey arena is still a go in Detroit. Detroit's financial crisis hasn't derailed the city's plans to spend more than $400 million in Michigan taxpayer funds on a new hockey arena for the Red Wings. So go go figure, right? Went in Rome and... Uh, keep the keep the games going, the gladiator games going. Uh, let them eat cake. Make sure you have a huge freaking police state <laughs> to bat them over the heads and protect private property. That's corporations' property. Chinese uh, Weibo users are salivating over Detroit's bankruptcy. So downtown. So since uh, the bankruptcy was announced on July 18th, it says here there's a bunch of people bargain hunting Chinese investors, saying they have tons of calls from people from mainland China, saying I have people calling and saying I'm serious, I want to buy 100, 200 properties. From May of last year, Michigan town near Ohio could become China City. A 415-unit housing complex would be home to Chinese business people. Detroit revenue collectors or cops arrested for robbing drivers at gunpoint. Originally, the robberies were suspect suspected as being perpetrated by fake cops, which turned out to be real cops driving a personal vehicle. Chicago's next Windy City cash balance plummets to only $33 million as debt triples. July 24th, urban warfare training exercises continue in Chicago area. Blackhawk helicopters startling residents.
Meet the Mental Asylum, the Department of Homeland Security's new Pentagon, so they're turning a sane asylum to DHS headquarters, $4.5 billion headquarters. Some would say it's crazy. Get it?